Hello, you guys. I want to talk to you about migrating to Texas. There's a lot of good reasons to come to Texas. Taxes, um, no state tax, and um, the property is a lot of places you can find cheap property here, cheap land. But it's a trick to that, too. That's what brought me here, me and my son, it was the cheap land that we found on eBay. But the catch is, when the land is very, very cheap, you probably can't grow anything on it, or it probably needs a lot of work. You probably need to do some excavating. And just keep that in mind. But land is land, so you always have it once you purchase it. So, you know, if it's at a price that you can afford, I would say go for it. Do just like I did. Just get it and um, work it as you as you um as the opportunity presents itself. But one thing I want to warn you about migrating to here to Texas. Avoid these little small towns, these little tiny cities. You know, if you're from the city and particularly if you don't have any friends or family in these little small areas or you're not of the same race as these um people in the small little towns I'll stay stay away from them. My son and I, we've been here six years now, and we've been harassed basically all the way, the whole time. Um, at the beginning, I thought, well, maybe, you know, it'll subside, you know, once people get to know me, once we've been here a while, once they realize that, you know, we're just here to carve out a life for ourselves. Um, like everybody else and um, some people want to kind of um, label it as uh, some kind of discrimination it's not discrimination it's, um, I am the only black person that I know in Presidio, Texas I'm the only one with a permanent address anyway there are um, African Americans that come from all over the place um, with border patrol I'm some with the military, but I'm the only one that I've been knowing for knowing of for years that have a permanent uh, residence here, and um, we've been catching it. We've been catching it, and now I realize, you know, well, I, I realized um, a couple years ago it was never going to end. Um, we dealt with everything from road rage to um, insults. Um, just being shunned, um, people refusing to do business with us, contractors refusing to do business with us, um, or just like everything, just being harassed and, you know, being harassed at restaurants uh, and being just, it's just a whole list of things. Um, people just shun your way, um, waiting in line, you, you know, they'll see, if it's only me waiting in line, you know, they are just, well, particularly this one place, I won't say, because I don't want to condemn the whole institution, plus, I'm totally relying on this one particular institution, in in a way, but um, there's one particular person, one particular employee, that if I happen to be the only one in line, she takes forever, and um, just uh, a few days ago, when I did get to the counter to be um service she changed her she she had to um instead of waiting on me right away she put some staples in her stapler and you know that was the, and she she anyway that's just one person right there and i had an incident with her before where um she said she had given something to me and she had not but the games are very extensive here in Presidio, and even with that, the, what I've done to avoid the harassment that I that I receive here in Presidio is that I do most of my business out of town. Uh, we don't actually live in Presidio anyway. My son and I, we live about 20 miles away from Presidio, and we drive 100 miles away to avoid the harassment in Presidio. And so that was working pretty good. Um, we, you know, now the gas done got pretty high. Um, 
it's not going to affect us very much because one of the advantages of living out here in the desert is that you know you can buy you a patch of land, a patch of land, uh, put you a cabin on top of it. Um, if you um, pretty good with wiring electricity a little bit, if you well, I mean it doesn't. It's not really all that complicated, but um, if you're not afraid of solar power and you can um, put together your solar system. And actually, I give a shout out to Windy Nation. Um, they sell total kits. You can buy your total solar um, kit. Um, we started out with uh, two batteries, four solar panels, and you get the, with that you get the power inverter and you get the power control. Oh, what's that? Um, current control, power control uh, module. You get everything you need in the kit, which was great. Um, that was about six years ago. And at that time, it was, I believe we paid 700 something like $740. Probably a little more now, but you get a complete kit. You don't have to know what you're doing. You just can just put it, or put it together. Everything you need is right there. And that's Windy Nation. Um, you can go straight to their website, Windy Nation, or you can go to eBay. They're on eBay as well. But back to this harassment thing. So that's why we stay out of Presidio, Texas, because um, we can't eat the food at the restaurant because we get get attitude at the restaurant. So um, we do eat food from the deli, but that's because everything is cooked together. But we, I don't allow anyone to individually prepare food for it so we stay out of the restaurants there and um so you know they they have they say like it's a very hospitable everybody's welcome and things like that and you read the sign as you enter the city um you know saying everybody's welcome but one thing you keep in mind is very hot here in Presidio the temperature now we live in the mountains and we're fortunately I mean it's we live on some rough terrain, but it's cooler here. It's, it's, we are about 10 degrees cooler than it is down there in um, Presidio, Texas, the little town itself. And and I said that to say, as hot as it is, Texas, Presidio, Texas is probably just as hot or hotter than any place in California or any place else in Texas. Um, but there's no water fountains. There's no public water fountains in Presidio, Texas, for a reason. And there's no public restroom. There's there's a public rest there's one public restroom, but it remains locked. When we first moved here six years ago, the public restroom was open to the public, like it's supposed to be, like the like it's expected to be. And about four months after we moved here, it it was locked. Um, you can't use it ever. It hasn't never been unlocked except for private private events. So when you come to um, Presidio, Texas, if you're going to camp out overnight or, you know, they, there is a place for um, visitors to camp out overnight. But basically you can camp out anywhere. I just, we camp out wherever we just have the notion to camp. But there is one Pacific area that you can park your car in camp. But keep in mind that um, you're probably not going to have any Wi-Fi. The few places, the few establishments that do have Wi-Fi um, usually cut their Wi-Fi off at a certain time at night. I think it's like around whatever time their doors close, they cut off their Wi-Fi. And so... Um, you come to Texas, well, you come to Presidio, Texas, you're not going to, and if you're going to spend a night here, you know, if you're going to camp out, spend the night, there's not going to be a place to use the bathroom. You're not going to be able to get a drink of water. There's not even any vending machine. There's one vending machine that um, sells sodas, and half the time it doesn't work. In fact, um, we lost some money in there a couple of days ago. But... Like I said, there's no bathroom, there's no public bathroom, there's no public water fountain. As hot as it is here, you can't get a drink of water unless you go into you go into a store. Now some of the stores have water fountains and bathrooms. Most most stores have um, uh, most of the stores have not all, but most of the stores have bathrooms 
and some of them also have water fountains but it's set up that way because you have to go in the store and they're not expecting you to just come in the store just for that they expect you to come in the store to spend money so um and i think it's so i just think that's a classic example of how welcoming how welcoming the um presidio is it's not welcoming at all and it's not a discrimination thing it's a border thing it's a lot of activity going on at the border and i think if you're not a part of it or if you have if you don't have family that's a part of it that you just you know you're connected to the family or whatever if you're not a participant a participant of what's going on at the border don't come to the border don't make the same mistake that i did and like i said i was thinking that maybe after uh six months a year or so that the harassment would stop but it never did um we you know we're we, we deal with road rage where people um i don't know if it's road rage is the right term but pe where people get behind you and they drive like about a foot and a half right behind you and and they just stay there you know for miles and miles you know they're just driving very close um to your bumper and so there's um, so several, there's been several times where, but well, more than several times where the um, law enforcement, you know, sometimes they have to get close to you to read your license plate or, or they have a, a machine where they can, they're trying to read this, your sticker, your state sticker. But I have dealt with so much road rage where every time someone um, gets close to me, I, I'm thinking, you know, a lot of times what I just do, I just pull over. You know, I just pull over and force them to, um, you know, go ahead and get in front of me. And, um, and so I just instantly put, pull over. And so and I find out that it's the, the sheriff or the police or state trooper. And, you know, they say, well, why did you pull over? And I said, like, I thought you were somebody that was harassing me. And because that's how much harassment that I've been dealing with in the six years that I've been here. You know, I just... Because that's usually 80% of the time is usually somebody who just tailgated me. And so um, recently, my son and I, we were basically held captive in, what was it, Fort Stockton, Texas. Our van broke down. We brought a, I, I purchased a lemon. And after I purchased the van, six months, two, two six months Six weeks, two months later, it broke down, and we ended up stranded in Fort Stockton, Texas. So we were going along. I probably do a whole video on that at a later date. But um, the owner of the repair shop said it would be a week. You know, I think he said six days, six to eight days. He had it translated to me that it would be six to eight days for the um, engine to be ordered, delivered, and installed. We were in Fort Stockton for 28 days. And when we got home, we realized that our property had been vandalized. Not, not major, not in a major way, but still, nevertheless, someone trespassed on our property and vandalize our property and to my knowledge that is like almost unheard of here in Texas people just trespassing is just something you don't do you can pretty much do anything else but no you, you don't go on other people's property and um, so we when we came home we found um, one of our cabins had been broken into um, it, apparently it didn't seem like anything was stolen so that that is the reason why it was labeled as just vandalism somebody just came out here to vandalize us and see and the thing is I so I realized okay this thing uh, this harassment has escalated to vandalism and trespassing and I think the reason for that is because I don't go to Presidio that often you know 80% of the time when I'm in Presidio, you know, someone says something inappropriately 
or said something just to be mean, you know, or something happens, you know, and then when you get into a disagreement with one person in Presidio, you're, you're going to have probably 30, 40, 50 other people shunning you. You know, giving you attitude or giving you the cold shoulder, you know. And fortunately, that doesn't really bother me that much. But I just, you know, just to stay out of that atmosphere, I try to be out of Presidio. Now, Presidio is the closest little city to where we live. So we have to go there sometimes. We can't travel 100 miles um, all the time. But trust me, we do. Um, we take our money elsewhere most of the time. But um, now that it has escalated, and see, and I realize what, what, what they try to do systematically, and, you know, they try to make it look like it's an individual thing, but um, there is, it's racism in Presidio, but it's not primary a racial issue. It's that, the, the, you know, they had a little party, um, you know, they had a little activities and stuff going on in Presidio. And if you're not a part of that, then they're worried about that maybe you're there doing some type of surveillance. You know, even though you're probably going to be like me, um, couldn't care less. You know, I'm not making any money from it. You know, I don't do drugs. I don't um, sell drugs. I'm not interested. I don't even care. You know, the only thing that I ask for people to do for me is just leave me alone. But I see that that's not going to happen. So I say, well, if they're worried about me talking about it, you know, and they're going to harass me anyway. You know, so while I still can say something, I, well, then I'm going to say something, especially now that you done started trespassing and vandalizing my property. And so I wanted this to go on record. And I wanted to warn other people. Now, if you're going to come by your lonesome self, like a lone ranger like I did, um, you probably don't want to come to Texas, especially not southwest Texas, especially not Presidio County, Texas. You probably want to go somewhere else, somewhere um like a, a real city, a major city, not these little, they call them cities, but these little small towns and where everybody's related to everybody, everybody's telling the same lies and playing the same games and you're probably not going to be welcome. And um, like I say, I think the best thing is not to come this far south in Texas and also it's to not to come by yourself. You know, it's better if you come in with friends and family, you know, as a group. But, like, I, being a single, unmarried, African-American, female, I catch it all types of ways. You know, I catch it all types of male chauvinists. It's very thick. You can cut it with a knife here. You know, and um, the Mexican racism is very thick. You can cut it with a knife here. And so I, you know, I see the worst in people because people, they feel like, okay, well, she, we don't, we don't have to worry about running into her husband or her boyfriend. We don't have to worry about, you know, running into other family members and things like that. So they just really show out, you know, with me. And um, I've realized when I go to other places, I can, you know, I can interact with other human beings in a normal way and not have to always worry about being insulted you know, different implications made, um, you know, just harassed in any type of way. And people that want to do business, you know, the further north I go, I, I, I prefer, actually right now, um, the, according to the road trips that my son and I have taken in different cities that we've been to, we tend to like Odessa, Texas. And um, I'm kind of, I, I'm, I kind of like El, pa I mean, El Paso as well. Um, the VA department is there. Um, I got some friends there in El Paso. I kind of like El Paso. Um, but I would just say, if you're coming by yourself, stay in the areas where there's more developed areas, you know, more uh, variety of people. It's, you know, don't go to these little towns, especially in the far south where we are and near the border you know, right next door to the border and, you know, people down here, they're doing their thing and they're worried about, you know, who's watching and, and you know, in most cases, definitely in my case, I don't even care and I'm being harassed and we've been here six years now, so that's why I'm making this video to warn people and to
put the word out. Um, Sheriff Department here already knows about the um, vandalism. And, you know, I've had, um, it's on record with the police department on different incidents where I've been harassed by um, different um, residents here. So, that's, I, guess, I think that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe so I can make more videos. Thank you.